Hey friends, this is Kelly Calabrese from Intentionally Fabulous. And today we're talking about assertiveness training. It is a real life skill that is so valuable and so important. And I don't know about you, but I don't think I ever really was trained on this or learned this, or maybe it wasn't modeled in a healthy way in my life. So assertiveness, it's a skill. It's a confidence. It is a boundary. It is a boldness. It is a way to stand up for yourself. It's really a way for you to declare truth. And also it's important because every day there's going to be some type of negotiation that needs to happen in our lives. So we may need to engage in conflict. Perhaps we may need to be really firm about something. We may be need to speak about something that is difficult, right? Because we have a choice about what we can do about everything. We can keep our head in the sand. We can be passive aggressive. I mean, there's so many dysfunctional things that we can do, but we want to do things that are functional and healthy and wise. We don't want to be taken advantage of. And that's actually how I started just recently studying assertiveness training. A friend of mine who is a psychologist had me take an assessment and he said, wow, you know, Kelly, you're so healthy and so balanced and all these things are great. But because your trust is so high and your anxiety is so low, you really can get taken advantage of in relationships and business and so on. You need to be more assertive. So I started to do a deep dive on, okay, how do I build this skill? And I have to tell you, I've been using some of these things and it has been so empowering. So I want to share them with you. Some of them are really simple and it's like anything else when you practice it and you do it, it just becomes part of your nature and it is empowering and you'll start to notice people that are really good at this and people that are not. And I promise you the people who are good about being assertive, they just live such a better life compared to the people who are malfunctioning and not being assertive in the areas they need to. So let me just say what assertiveness is not. It is not being aggressive, mean, bullying, um, passive, any of those things. So what are some things you can do? One is really simple. And again, it's just a tool, have a setup line. So when you're talking, you might say something like, let me be clear, or I'm really serious about that, or I need your attention. What I'm about to say is important. So because we're living in such a distracted time, it's really vital that you get someone's attention when you're saying something that really has meaning. Another is to be an active listener. Most people are terrible about this, but we have two ears and one mouth. And if you're listening to what the other person says, that is going to help you instead of always being thinking about your answer, thinking defensively. And even starting off, a really great skill is to repeat back what they said for clarity and understanding for yourself and also for them. And it gives you time before you begin to speak about whatever that thing is. Another is your tone. You know, when you are serious about something, you can't be wishy-washy about it. You need to have a firm tone. Um, firm is you know, you'll, you'll know what it is. It's not wishy-washy. Another is to avoid the wishy-washy things like whatever, doesn't matter, whatever you want, I don't care, that kind of stuff. No, because the truth is you will feel like you never get your way if you're constantly saying, I don't care, doesn't matter, you pick. That's okay once in a while, but you'll get angry and resentful if you constantly do that and you really did want to go to that restaurant or you really did want to you know, take that girl's trip or choose whatever the thing was. If it's important to you, then say so because you have value and you have worth. Another thing is you might need to defer. So if you're in a place where especially, you know, women going through divorce, there may be a lot of decisions. You might be in an emotional time. You can't even think straight. You can very simply say, I need some time. I need to pray about it. I need to check with some wise friends. I need to sleep on this and just give yourself a little space so that you don't regret what you say and you can really give a wise answer. Another way is to communicate in writing. Maybe initially you feel better about taking a little time, take some moments, really put your thoughts down, communicate very clearly, and then there it is in writing and it gives the other person a chance to consider it also before they respond. Use data, right? Facts and stories will work. So that means come prepared. When you know you're coming into a conflict, 
especially during divorce, there's a lot of negotiation and conversations and big decisions that happen. You can get some facts, get some data so that you have something to back it up and it's not just your feelings. So that's just a, a powerful um, way to have some ammunition when you're being assertive and communicating. Another is be honest. You will never go wrong by telling the truth and being honest. You, you know, obviously someone could always try and take advantage of you, but what I have found is the truth always prevails and the truth always wins. And at least you know you can sleep well at night having communicated what was on your heart. Set boundaries. I have a whole YouTube video on this on boundaries. We could talk hours about that, but you always want to guard your heart. You always want to be safe. Set those boundaries so that the person can't attack you, can't bully you, can't, you know, really push you over. Um, and you'll, you can say, hey, if you're going to talk that way, this conversation is over. We'll come back. Or we need to get a mediator, a third person, because, you know, this isn't working. Uh, I don't like how you're coming at me. Uh, if you do this again, this conversation is going to get shut down. So just setting those boundaries. If you raise your voice, you know, if you walk out of the room, you know, that's the end of this discussion until we can, you know, both be civil or have a third person here with us. And just practice. I can tell you that having done this now, even in the small things, even in the simple things, it empowers you when you can say, yes, you know, I would like to uh, go for a bike ride before we go out for lunch or yes, I would like to, you know, finish this assignment before, you know, whatever. So you decide what it is, practice. I promise you, you're going to feel empowered and amazing. I would love to know what your thoughts are on this video. If you are a single woman going through any stages of separation, divorce, post-divorce, please email me at kelly at kellycalabrese.com. I would love to hear your story and uh, see if I can help you. And also join our Facebook group. It's called Intentionally Fabulous. It's for women there to support each other, talk about the hard things, talk about the real things, have some fun, and create a whole new amazing bonus life. So thanks for liking, thanks for sharing, thanks for commenting, and I hope to get to know you and see you in our group.